Okay. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Superintendent Anthony Furivanti, the officer in charge of Traffic Support Branch. What I'll do is I'll give a quick statement and then I'll open it up for questions. Last night's fatal crash saw our 62nd road fatality for this year. Each death on our roads has been one too many. At the same time last year, we had 52 people die on our roads as a result of crashes. 37 of the 62 people who have died on our roads were involved in a crash on rural roads this year and 25 people on our metropolitan roads. In the first five months of this year, we had 30 people die. In the last two and a half months, we've had 32 people die. At this time last year, we had eight people killed that weren't wearing a seatbelt. This year, we have had 15. Such a simple thing to do, and that could have saved lives. At this time last year, we had three pedestrians who were killed, whereas last, this year, we have had 10. Most of these were in a 50 kilometre an hour zone, which means one person involved in this crash, or well, each crash, was not paying attention, and they could have been avoided. At this time last year, we had five motorcyclists die on our roads, and this year we have had 11. There is, however, one commonality with every crash, and that is they were all preventable. One of the road users, not always a person who has lost their life, has disobeyed a road rule or made a mistake, sometimes just a simple, silly mistake. And then we also have crashes like Sunday, where someone dies as a result of extreme behaviour, where there is no regard for their life or the lives of others. Unforgivable. Driving is a complex task and requires the driver's full attention and compliance with road rules. That is why we pay so much attention to the fatal five, which are the five main factors which contribute to trauma on our roads. The, those factors are speeding, drink and drug driving, inattention, which is commonly mobile phone use, dangerous driving and not wearing seat belts. The mantra that we use in SAPOL and we try and educate the community about is that road safety is everyone's responsibility. We ask every road user whether a motorist, a cyclist or pedestrian, to obey each and every road rule. Concentrate on what you were doing at that time so that you and others can get to their destination safely. Make good choices when you're using the roads. There is no need for us to have any more deaths on our roads. Questions, please? Uh, firstly, to, to last night's incident in Salisbury South, can you talk us through the sequence of events that led up to the collision? Well, last one, last night uh, was quite a tricky one. Uh, we've had different reports of what was happening. So basically we know what happened, but we don't know why it happened. Uh, for some reason, uh, the driver lost control. Uh, the vehicle spun through the grass verge uh, in the medium strip and then collided with the vehicles going in the other direction. And unfortunately, a young 18-year-old lost his life, and we've got a 14-year-old uh, in a serious condition at the moment in hospital. Is it 14 or 16? 16. 16. Okay, a 16-year-old then. Uh, the last report I was received was 14. Was that car drag racing? At this stage, uh, we're still in the early parts of our investigation. Uh, we've had lots of different reports. I mean, it is an 80k zone. So there's nothing at all at this stage to suggest he was drag racing. And um, were drugs involved at all? It's too early in the investigation. You know, there's nothing to indicate uh, that there were drugs. Uh, you know, it may have just been one of inexperience. Um, the wreckage, it was quite confronting. How lucky are the other drivers to walk away with just minor injuries? Oh, you know, every incident... Uh, People are always lucky to drive away uh, without being injured or with minor injuries. You know, there, there were three cars involved. You know, there could have been ten cars involved. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason as to why things happen at times on, in, uh, on our roads. Superintendent, on the, um, the Lucy Padley crash from Sunday morning, um, can you talk us through why um, these youths were charged with transport? OK. As far as we're concerned, they were acting in concert. 
their actions were extreme, you know, definitely reckless. They had no regard for their lives or other lives. So for that very reason, we're charging them with manslaughter. Is it not normal in circumstances that they tend to be charged with death by drunk driving rather than manslaughter? And they've also been charged with that, but due to the extreme nature, uh, we're going to charge them with manslaughter as well. How shocked were you when the ages of these offenders came to life? Yeah, I mean, they're all so young. Uh, you know, I don't know why they've gone on this path of, uh, I suppose, destruction. They've got no regard for their lives and obviously no regard for anyone else's life. So, you know, I don't know what they were thinking at the time or what they're on. In, in the space of a couple of days, there's been a few instances where, particularly in the north, where there's been these uh, uh, fatalities. Do you believe the north is a particular problem area for speeding, dangerous driving? I mean, if you look at Main North Road, you know, it's a, it's a good road, it's got a good search, uh, surface, it's got nice, wide, medium strips, uh, there's safety cameras at intersections, so there's actually no reason why we should have any crashes on that road. And the only reason we had a crash on Sunday was because of the extreme behaviour uh, by the offenders. Just going back to the Lizzie Paddley crash as well, the, um, the, accused, the five accused and it may have all been answered in court, I'm not sure what happened today, but were they known to police? Uh, yes, they were. Some, or some of them were known to police, uh, and I suppose uh, that's what helped us uh, actually apprehend them. Are you able to go into why they were known? Uh, no, not at this stage. Would you like to see any dash cam footage from last night? Anyone that you know, might have images of uh, what happened to come forward? Or yeah, if anyone does have any dash cam footage or they witness the crash and they haven't spoken to police, we'd ask that they uh, ring our police station uh, or ring our, uh, our uh, response line on 13144 or ring Crime, crime Stoppers uh, and come forward and give us that information. Every little bit of uh, footage or a witness statement we can get helps us with our investigation. Superintendent, just one more back on the Padley um, crash. Do you expect to make any more arrests? Uh, no. Uh, as far as we're concerned, uh, we've got the five uh, people that were involved uh, in that crash. And just with the general um, fatality figures that have occurred, I know you said obviously there's the fate of five and that sort of thing. Is there any one particular um, reason why, these, why the fatalities have risen so much this year? I mean, I suppose when you look at the, statistic, the statistics that I went through, uh, people not wearing seatbelts. Uh, you know, there's been a major increase there. If you look at the weather, uh, I don't think the weather's been extreme this year. Uh, so as to why we've had uh, the crashes, it's because people have made bad choices. Um, what would your message be to motorists? Basically, you know, consider your life and the lives of others. When you're on the roads, make good choices. Before you go for a drive or go out on the roads, make good choices. You know, make sure you have enough rest, make sure you definitely don't drink or drug drive and think about the destination um, and how you're going to get there so that there's no need for you to disobey any road rule at all. Will police be stepping up in the operations to combat the rising road toll? Uh, we're always running operations. Uh, this Saturday uh, we're commencing uh, Operation Distraction once again uh, for mobile phones. Uh, another month or so down the track we'll be... Uh, conducting Operation Safe Hills, which is tar tar targeting motorcycles in the Adelaide Hills. Uh, there's always... And then we've got numerous drink driving operations coming up. We're always out there. But these aren't specific to the actual current road tolerance, are they? These are just the general ones that you do? Yeah, you've got to be, we've got to be careful not to concentrate on one uh, road rule that's just being disobeyed, because there's so many different ones. And they all basically do come down to the Fable 5 in the end. Uh, so that's why we, we do mix it up. People aren't going to know when we're going to target that sort of offence until we're actually doing it. However, even when we're not running operations, uh, police officers are out there uh, making sure people are, are, are obeying those road rules. Do you think there needs to be more education with respect to the younger drivers? A lot more, a bit more of an open conversation about driving responsibly, in the, particularly in the north? Well, I, I mean, I wouldn't say particularly in the north. I mean, everywhere. 
there should be conversations about safe driving. And it probably starts at the dinner table at home. It should be in schools. It should be at the dinner table. Uh, and I know that when I had young children going out on the road, I'd say, you know, drive carefully. Uh, and that's the message we need to get across. We want to see him back home safely. And were seatbelts an issue in the two most recent um, fatalities? Uh, no, definitely not. Last one, or that's it. All good. Thank you. Okay, thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Just checking the road toll, because earlier today it was 61 over 51.